the time has come to fire it up and see if all the work that I did was a huge waste of time or not. So as I mentioned before, look at that beautiful pretty painted intake. It won't last that long, but you know it is beautiful and pretty. I need to hook up the fuel pump, but before I do that I'm going to change the oil. I want to show you guys this. Some of you might not have ever seen anything like this, but here's the oil filter at the top of the engine. Here is the old filter. That's what um, the oil filters look like on these cars. I have a new one to put in, um, but I believe the capacity for these is five quarts in the in the block and then one in the filter. Uh, we'll have to see. It actually doesn't say in the service manual how many quarts, so I'm going to fill it until it's full. But yeah, this is how you add oil. You pour it in the filter and then you add it right here into this. So I have six quarts of brand new oil. It's actually its only third oil change it's ever had in the seven years I've owned it. Obviously I need to drive it more. So get the oil changed, get the fuel line hooked up, and then we'll see how she runs. So the only thing that I hear is the power steering belt might be a little bit loose. Um, it did tick when I first started it up. Actually, it ticked exactly the same as it had previously, but now after letting it run up, run and warm up, no more tick. So we fixed the tick, and I'm happy with that. Um, I was a little hesitant on doing the intake just because I had so much trouble with the dual quad intake, but it seems like it's running fine. It's not missing or anything like that. Um, I'm going to get let it warm up a little bit more and then hit it with the temp gun and see if we've improved any when it comes to temp. I mean, it's only it's a weird day in July in Texas and it's only it's going to be like 90 something today, so it's not going to be super hot, but you know, we'll check it today, but then we'll check it again on the next hot day. Let's see what our temps are at. So, at the exhaust crossover it's 330, which was about that was about normal uh, before. We come up to the top of the intake. We're at 180 something. I think that's pretty normal. But then we get to the spacer, we drop to 140. And then we get to the carburetor. I mean, we're at 100, 100 degrees maybe. So that's pretty good. I think it was at 180 before. But again, I'm going to test it again once it gets hot. And then we'll see where we're at at that point. So after a drive, uh, the temperature is about right here. A lot of times it'll go all the way to the right. According to Cadillac, that's not overheating. That's just, you know, hot or cold, basically. Um, again, I don't think we're going to have it be hot enough today to make this work, but I'm gonna let the engine idle for about five minutes, sit for another five, and then see how well it starts. The engine's been running for a while. We have temperature all the way up. So let's check temps just for kicks. Let's see where we're at now that I've driven it around the block. 
So about 350, I don't know if you guys can see that, 350 on the manifold, about 240 at the top, the spacer is about 200, and the carbs are about 160. So maybe those plugs by themselves aren't enough. Maybe I do need a, one of those phenolic spacers. So let's close the hood. And turn it off. And let's let it heat soak. After a little bit of heat soak, let's see how it goes. According to the temp, eh, we fell some, but... Nope, it didn't really do much. So it looks like my only solution is I need to get one of those phenolic spacers.